Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. You're watching Alaska Weather with us on this Wednesday, November the 13th. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information, which you can do easily by finding us online at weather.gov slash Alaska or weather.gov slash Fairbanks slash Juneau or slash Anchorage. That'll get you to your local weather forecast office in just about one click. Now, one more click on the map will get you to your hyperlocal forecast. Uh, we uh, put the forecast out in a big mesh grid on the map there, and finding your square on that map will make your forecast a lot more important to you and make a lot more sense. So make sure you check that out and then bookmark that page. You can do the similar thing on uh, your mobile device. A cell phone or a tablet will work just fine, especially in low bandwidth situations. If you don't have a lot of fast internet, try mobile.weather.gov. Type in your city, your village, your town comma AK and hit go and then bookmark that page to your home screen. It works just the same way. It's not an app, but it works like a very fast website. Uh, you can find similar information on the phone. Your Alaska weather information line is always on 1-800-472-0391. And if you still can't find what you're looking for, let me know. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is an easy way to find me. A lot of weather is going on across South Central and the interior today and still pulling out of the West Coast. Let's start in northern parts of Southeast tonight. A winter weather advisory is posted for the Klondike Highway, mainly approaching White Pass, looking like snow is going to accumulate down to about 2,500 feet. Uh, you might see about four to six inches of snow there, so if you're driving to or from uh, Haines there and out of the area, uh, make sure that you've got some supplies in the back of your car in case because uh, the potential is for snow to accumulate. But uh, there is a lot of wet and warm air moving northward, so uh, if it does start to snow and when that happens, uh, it may be slow to stop, and uh, that, that snow line again is uh, pushing into about the 2,500 foot line. So keep that in mind if you're traveling through the White Pass area in the next uh, 24 hours or so. Over in South Central, a lot of red here in the map. Uh, we are talking about winter storm warnings now for the Susitna Valley, the Matanuska and the Susitna Valley, uh, and then of course down to the Kenai, and includes the Anchorage area. Mainly this is due to the potential for freezing rain and in some cases also some snow. Let's start for the also some snow part. That'll mainly be west of the Parks Highway where we expect to see snow falling there. Uh, so places that are uh, generally west of Wasilla, you can expect some minor accumulations of snow. But it looks like that warm and wet air that's slicing up and over uh, Anchor Point and northward across the Kenai Peninsula through the Anchorage area, through the Matanuska Valley, there is potential there for as little as about one to three tenths of an inch around the Anchorage area in the lower terrain. Hillside's probably gonna be on the warmer side of this, so maybe not as much concern at some of those higher neighborhoods in town. But if we get clipped by this across the Matanuska and the eastern Susitna Valley, it could be as much as a quarter inch of freezing rain on top of some snow, or actually underneath the snow as it were, uh, across the region as we go through Thursday midday. So this area here is going to be a little tricky to travel and drive around especially and of course uh, aircraft you want to be mindful of what the forecast is doing because severe icing potential could be right here on top of us for a time until about midday tomorrow. Now east of town and once you get out of uh, let's say Chickaloon and down into the valleys there and then heading east toward Glen Allen a uh, much better chance you're going to see some snow. In fact the Copper River Valley is looking at about six to ten inches of snow in general with some of the higher amounts, maybe up to 15 in some of the hills there. That'll last through about 7 o'clock on Thursday. So driving east uh, back and forth to Glen Allen uh, and the cutoff there is going to be a little more challenging probably in the next 24 hours. Uh, and then we'll let the DOT get out there and, uh, and uh, do all their magic and get things cleared up for us. Out across the eastern parts of the Alaska Range, a winter storm warning is posted there. Uh, looks like we could see as much as 7 to 13 inches of snow. That warning will be rescinded, uh, looks like, around 6 o'clock on Saturday at this point. And as you move a little bit further north now, uh, winter weather advisories posted for the middle Tanana Valley, including Fairbanks, and also the Deltana and Tanana Flats region. This is a combination of snow and wind, and it looks like gusts around the hills around Fairbanks could reach upwards around 40 miles per hour. Down in town, thankfully, the wind is going to be blowing that strong in Fairbanks, but gusts could still reach upwards of 25 miles per hour. And I've seen your tweets today on campus there. It sounds like the wind's been blowing, the temperatures have been down, and it feels like a Midwestern United States winter rather than a Fairbanks winter with the wind and the cold at the same time. So hang in there, it will improve. But it does look like the winter weather advisory uh, for the middle Tanana Valley probably take you at least until uh, Friday morning there 
Uh, you might see about three to five inches of snow with that as well. Now, across some of the higher terrain, the wind's going to be a little stronger. There may be a little more snow, and therefore, it's a winter storm warning. It looks like for uh, Tanana in the central interior all the way to the upper Koyukuk, uh, the Yukon Flats, the upper Tanana Valley, all of this area here is probably going to have a little more snow, uh, as much as seven to ten inches in some cases, maybe 12, in fact, for the 40-mile country around Eagle and Northway, and gusts to about 40 miles per hour, especially on those highway summits. So travel with care, travel with caution, plan on having maybe a travel interruption and be prepared with some extra gear in your car if you have to be on the road tonight and tomorrow. Out across the west, a lot of what we're dealing with here is wind. Uh, there's still some winter weather advisories out across the west, but a lot of what we're seeing out here is some uh, pretty gusty winds. In fact, for St. Lawrence Island, gusts to 60 miles per hour are possible, the lower Yukon Valley looking at gusts to 45. This will take you at least to 6 o'clock on Friday morning for the high wind warning at around St. Lawrence Island and uh, probably about noon on Thursday for the lower Yukon Valley as all this wind is wrapping in off the Brooks Range and pushing out to sea across the northern Bering. So a lot going on. Winter weather in the interior, uh, rain and snow, some of that freezing rain across south central, snow for the Copper River Valley, snow for uh, the White Pass area and the Klondike Highway, and certainly wind out across the west. Let's get to the weather maps. Here's a look at your satellite picture, and you can see this hurricane force low that's been moving up out across the North Pacific is losing some of its steam right now, but it has been a powerful moisture pump pushing a lot of wet and warm air into south central Alaska up and over some of that colder, drier air, and again creating that freezing rain potential across south central. Rain for southeast, but as that climbs in elevation up White Pass, that becomes snow, of course, so that's where we're getting our winter weather advice there and then all of this has a lot of wind just racing across the south facing slopes of the Brooks Range and the Yukon Valley pushing over St. Lawrence Island and all feeding into a very powerful system there at 967 millibars still across the western Gulf and North Pacific pushing rain into the Alaska Peninsula haven't heard of too many problems out here across the west if that's not right let us know we'd love to hear your storm reports Low pressure out across the northern Gulf has dropped to about 980 millibars. And again, reports of freezing rain around uh, the Sterling Highway. Snow will continue to fly across the Copper River Valley and northward tonight. The pressure gradient is tight with high pressure across the north slope running around 1,044 millibars to about 1,036 right across the slope itself. Areas of fog and snow there. Low pressure will start to uh, diminish a little bit in its strength as we head through tonight. But it does look like tonight will be the worst part for freezing rain around south central before that improves quickly on Thursday into Friday. Tonight's weather shows wind and snow across the interior, rain for southeast, choppy conditions across the Gulf, and heavy freezing spray, a threat for the west coast where the water remains open right now and a lot of wind moving across the Yukon Valley and just south of the Brooks Range there, so watch for blowing snow in the region. High pressure setting up across the north slope. That'll keep visibility down and probably flying conditions uh, certainly choppy there as you move through the northern interior Thursday and Friday. Watch for convection here across the northern Gulf. If you're flying back and forth, this will be a pretty turbulent area as we go through the remainder of the week. Out across the west, areas of light snow possible all the way through the southern interior, generally south of the Yukon Valley. North of that, it's wind, it looks like. You will see the sun, but it will be a windy and cold period. Pockets of heavier rainfall across southeast as well. As we get into Friday, look for low pressure to hover across southwest in Bristol Bay. It does look like we'll be warming up across south central, but for the interior, snow should be winding down. Cold temperatures will remain with high pressure sitting right across the Brooks Range at around 1,020 millibars. And a steady southerly flow may bring in some pockets of drier air to southeast, but showers will continue for the period and showers of snow across parts of the west coast and north slope. A quick check of temperatures tonight in southeast, mid to upper 40, south central hovering at or just below the freezing point, Kodiak 42. King Salmon and Dillingham in the 20s, 15 for McCoryak, 1 in Galena, 9 in Nome, 13 for Ukiavik, and Fairbanks down to 1 below. High temperatures for your Thursday, pretty chilly stuff in the interior, single digits or even colder than that, 21 in Ukiavik, Juno looking at temperatures of 46 and 35 in Anchorage. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And on to aviation weather now, IFR will continue across all of the Gulf Coast, including uh, Kodiak Island, tip to tail, Prince William Sound, Cook Inlet, all the way down the Alaska Peninsula Arm into Bristol Bay, and really most of the central and eastern chain and hit and miss out in the west. We'll also have a pocket of IFR concerns across the north slope. As we saw yesterday, that'll kind of grow and contract a little bit as we go throughout our day. 
MVFR will linger north and west of the Alaska Range into the upper Tanana Valley in the upper Yukon and all across the YK Delta into the Bering Sea, Nunavak Island, out towards St. Lawrence Island, and really the bulk of southeast with IFR concerns around Chilkoot and White Pass, close to Gustavus and north all the way up into uh, Icy Cape, Cape Fairweather and Yakutat and all along the outer coast. As we get into the afternoon tomorrow, it looks like we'll continue under MVFR for most of southeast, but it looks like IFR will be right there on top of the capital city, perhaps even nosing over and south, up toward Haines and Skagway, out toward Gustavus, and then through Cross Sound and along the outer coast, IFR will linger there. So the chance that this is kind of sloshed back and forth a little bit is certainly there. Watch for convection across the Gulf itself, and that means anything that's working in and out of the Gulf could have some uh, added uh, intensity to it as that's moving ashore and that includes areas along the Copper River Valley and the basin there as well as Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula and Kodiak Island. Interior wise along the mountains and then gradually spreading northward we expect to see more IFR there. Notice that IFR concerns linger across the north slope. The eastern Beaufort Sea coast like Kaktovik probably okay but marginal concerns will linger for most of north slope communities. Kotzebue Sound and northern ends of Norton Sound including uh, Nome and Kotzebue and Shishmaref should be okay as you get up into Kotzebue Sound itself. And then watch for a thin ribbon of IFR out around uh, ADAC and ATCA to pass through with that next wave. As we get into Friday morning, hit and miss IFR again across the uh, Gulf, especially southeast there. You'll still see MBFR, but IFR along the higher terrain. Haines, Skagway to Gustavus, probably Juno again. Convection spreading into southern parts of southeast, so that will change the intensity of any precipitation again. And across the uh, upper end of the Tanana and even the Yukon Valley, looking at IFR concerns there. But the bulk of the heavier weather will be spreading east and moving away from the Kenai Peninsula slowly. Marginal concerns will linger across south central including uh, Cook Inlet, Susitna Valley, and Matanuska Valley locations. Out across the west, IFR concerns between St. Matthew, McCoriak, uh, southwest and Bristol Bay, with improving weather out across the Bering. And IFR lingers across the north slope for the afternoon, but this time really locks in on the eastern Beaufort, and then more north slope communities up to the Brooks Range summits. MBFR for most of the Chukchi coastline there across the north, Kotzebue Sound, Norton Sound, still sneaking out okay, and really most of the Yukon Valley by the afternoon looking at VFR, and you won't run into any substantial issues there across the uh, eastern interior along the Alcan until you get into places like Eagle, uh, Chicken, all the way down toward uh, the north slopes of the Alaska Range in the east. Here's a look at your pass conditions in detail then. Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass, we expect to see marginal conditions last throughout most of the day. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass will be down all day as well as Rainy Pass. Windy Pass is headed that way after a marginal start. Isabel Pass looking to be instrument flight rule as you go through your Thursday. Metasta Pass starts that way. Some marginal improvement is possible. Tanita Pass, so we expect to see down most of the day. Portage Pass down as usual and Chilkoot and White Pass looking for IFR pretty much all day long. Freezing levels are looking a little better in the west. We still have some overrunning here around Lake Iliamna and just south of Lake Clark and down the Alaska Peninsula Arm. Uh, the freezing levels themselves anywhere from two to about 6,000 feet for most Gulf Coast communities, a little bit higher as you move into southern and southeast with levels up and above 8,000 feet. Most areas in interior Alaska will be below freezing for the next 24 to 48 hours. Icing potential shows higher risk there north of the Alaska Range tomorrow, uh, Lake Iliamna down to Bristol Bay and then along the Gulf Coast for some considerable moderate potential there, anywhere from five to 8,000 feet and above, above 2,000 feet for most areas working into parts of the interior. And the main freezing rain concern, though, should be uh, lessening somewhat as we go. A trough of low pressure working through the Gulf, another one across the North Pacific, high pressure up across the Chukchi, giving us a northerly wind down the west coast, really energizing this storm system as it moves through. You can see that at 9,000 feet, a broad south and westerly flow with winds 30 to 35 coming in, uh, 50 knot winds moving across the YK Delta, and a fast-moving river of air just south of the Brooks Range here with 50 to 60 knot winds, 70 knots at 3,000 feet, really channeling that flow. There's going to be some turbulence here across the Yukon Valley and north through the uh, Brooks Range and broad south and uh, easterlies coming into south central and southwesterlies for southeast. As you look at turbulence, then again, the main focus for fast moving winds and some heavy chop and severe probably uh, north and along the Yukon Valley. Also looking for some considerable moderate to crank up across the north and eastern Gulf Coast. Hello. I'm a Gozar series weather satellite orbiting 22,000 miles above Earth. I can see a lot of cool stuff from up here, and I take pictures of it with my spiffy camera that has 16 different settings. I have
have such good eyesight, I can see clouds, snow, smoke, smog, and ash. So I can warn you about dangerous conditions and help you avoid them. When storms are brewing, I watch them closely and help with hurricane, tornado, and flood warnings to help keep you safe. And my lightning mapper tracks lightning strikes way up in the sky, even through dark, dense clouds. I also help with search and rescue missions. I listen for distress signals from emergency beacons and tell search and rescue teams just where to find people who need help. But even when I'm keeping a close eye on Earth, I'm monitoring weather out here in space, too. I watch the sun for big bursts of energy, which send waves of radiation toward Earth that can affect power grids, block communication with planes, cause errors in GPS, and damage satellites. Space weather is also very dangerous for astronauts working outside the International Space Station. I warn them so they can get inside where they'll be safe. So the next time you watch a weather report or check your phone for the forecast, remember, that's me. So look to the sky and wave. I'll be here. Things are looking pretty bad down there. But don't worry, I'm going to give weather forecasters a heads up and help you stay safe. I'm a Gozar series weather satellite, and one of my jobs is to keep an eye on Earth's weather as I orbit above. But I'm 22,000 miles above Earth. How does your local weather forecaster know what I see all the way up here? First, I have to figure out what's going on. I point my special camera at the Earth and take pictures of the clouds I see below. My pictures show where the clouds are, but I also take lots of other notes about the clouds. For example, how high they reach into the atmosphere, how much rain they might cause, and when a severe storm may be forming. But I can't keep all of this information to myself. I have to share it with weather forecasters down on Earth. A big antenna is waiting for my call. Since I'm a satellite, I send my pictures and notes in a computer language of ones and zeros. Luckily, the antenna speaks my language. Computers connected to the antenna organize my notes and combine all of the pictures and cloud information and translate them into weather maps. They send a version of the maps back up to me. I'll hold on to these for later. Another copy of the maps is split into smaller pieces. This helps the maps move faster from one place to another. The map pieces are then sent for processing before being sent back up in the sky to a communication satellite. From there, the maps are picked up by antennas at the National Weather Service forecast offices in each region. There are more than 100 offices. I also take the maps that I received and send them out to companies that specialize in making the maps more colorful and better for viewing on TVs and computers. The colorful maps and the maps from the forecast offices then go to your local weather forecaster. The forecaster combines the information from these maps with lots of other information, like model forecast data and radar data, to make predictions about the upcoming weather in your area. And that's how I help you find out if bad weather is going to ruin your afternoon plans. You're welcome.
soon it will be my time to shine. In outer space. I'm the GOES-R satellite. That stands for Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite. And the R stands for my order in this series of weather satellites. Like my older siblings before me, I'll do a lot for watching weather, but I'm pretty special because I have a lot of new gadgets. I'm originally from Colorado, but my journey to space has a few stops along the way. I'll be shipped in a very special satellite shipping container to Kennedy Space Center. Moving me around is not easy. I'm over 18 feet wide and weigh 6,000 pounds. And then things get really exciting. I get loaded onto an Atlas V-541 launch vehicle. A big rocket! Woo! After Atlas and I blast off together, my compartment separates from the launch vehicle and I continue to climb higher and higher. Then I break away completely and unfurl my solar panel and antenna. <sighs> After that, I have to use my thrusters to get into just the right position, 22,000 miles above the ground and traveling 1.9 miles per second to keep up with Earth's rotation. And then I can officially start my job along with my fellow GOES sisters, where I take advanced pictures for more accurate weather forecasts, map lightning in real time, and improve the monitoring of the sun's activity. It's going to be so awesome! I can't wait! And now, marine weather around Alaska. And back with a look at your sea ice update now. The Beaufort Sea continues to fill in there with concentrations reaching past that 80% threshold, which turns our color white here on our map. You'll notice there's still some marginal ice there west or east of Utkiavik and not a whole lot across the Chukchi Sea. And of course, that open area extends well to the north through the Bering Strait. We do have some marginal ice here across the YK Delta and some a uh, little bit more fast ice forming in some of the bays and the sounds there. Uh, but we do expect to see a lot of this uh, ice across the west coast, probably in jeopardy thanks to the warm air that continues to pour northward at this point and a lot of the wind is blowing offshore. Let's take a look at southeast now. South and easterly winds will be picking up 20 to 30 knots on the inside. Forward at 10 foot seas across the Clarence Strait, uh, the highest of which across the Clarence Strait itself. Uh, looks like 20 knots coming up most of the outer coast, 25 knots there across the southern outer coast and into the Dixon entrance with 17 to 18 foot seas on the outside, 16 to 17 foot seas across the northern gulf as you head up toward Yakutat on Thursday. Uh, the winds continue as we head into Friday, 25 knots for most areas there, looking at about 15 to 16 foot seas on the outside, and gusts will pick up across Stevens Passage into the Lynn Canal, 20 knots there from the south with 4 to 5 foot seas on the inside, gusts to 35 again up toward the Lynn Canal as we go into Friday. For Thursday inside of Prince William Sound, easterlies at 20 knots, four foot seas, a southerly wind coming into uh, the Hitchinbrook entrance region, more of a steady easterly wind flowing into the Barren Islands in the Kenai Peninsula and Kenai Fjords region. Northeasterlies coming down Cook Inlet, anywhere from 15 to 30 knots, 10 foot seas across the western Barrens on Thursday, and that comes up to 13 feet on Friday. Winds will stay with us out of the north and east through Friday through Cook Inlet with the strongest again around the Barrens with a north uh, easterly wind coming through Prince William Sound and east and southeasterly winds across the northern Gulf, the highest of which will be shifting eastward towards southeastern Alaska as we get into Friday. I had to say east about a million times there. Northeasterly winds through Shelikoff Strait there on Thursday, five foot seas east and northerly winds developing on the back side of the low pressure system across the western Gulf on Thursday, the lowest pulling east and we have north and westerly winds developing behind that. You can see that really starting to pick up here out over the Bering. Look for 5 to 11 foot seas across the Bering Sea coast, 5 to 11 foot seas across the northern Pacific as well. 5 foot seas inside of Shelikov Strait becomes 7 foot seas on Friday with more of a northerly flow, 25 knots there. 30 knots from the southwest on the eastern side of Kodiak Island. And here are those northwesterly kicker winds coming in behind the system, 20 to 25, looking at 7 to 8 foot seas behind the storm on Friday. For the Aleutians, look for stronger winds out over the Priblovs and the central Bering Sea. More on that in a minute. Northwesterlies across the western chain, 15 to 20 knots, looking at 6 to 7 foot seas. And north and westerly winds for the central and eastern chain, 25 to as much as 30 knots with 9 to 10 foot seas there. 12 foot seas coming into Nikolsky and Alaska from the north. 
That becomes 25 knots from the northwest on Friday, 9 to 11 foot seas across the Bering, 7 to 8 foot seas across the Pacific. Out west, we already develop our southerly flow ahead of the next weather system, 20 knots there from the south with a 9 foot sea on Friday. Now for the west coast, northeasterly winds, storm force winds here of 45 knots out of the Norton Sound, off St. Lawrence Island, out across St. Matthew, 40 to 45 will give us about 15 to 16 foot seas in most areas. Northerly is 30 knots and 14 foot seas for St. Paul and St. George. And uh, some indication there might be a little bit of higher winds and seas out there just around St. Matthew. As we get into Friday, that flow shifts a little bit more. The strongest winds will blow out over St. Lawrence Island and start to blow out into more of western parts of the Bering Sea. So winds diminish for the Kuskokwim Delta, St. Paul, St. George, even St. Matthew, 25 to 30 knots with 5 to 14 foot seas in some areas there. 8 to 14 foot seas out of Norton Sound, Nome, and uh, out around St. Lawrence Island looking for uh, about 14 foot seas there south of St. Lawrence Island and out towards St. Matthew for the Friday afternoon hours. Northeasterly winds over the Beaufort. Again, ice is forming, so we're shutting down the seas forecast there, but 4 to 11, even 14 foot seas outside of the Chukchi coast as we go into Thursday with those 40 knot winds. Winds diminish there on Friday. More of a northerly push for the Beaufort, looking for three foot seas around Utkiavik, five to nine foot seas down toward Point Hope. Constable Sound in the outer regions, 35 knots and 11 foot seas and 14 foot seas again around the Bering Strait community. So a lot of cold wind moving around there. For tonight, winter storm warnings plastered over south central. A lot of that due to freezing rain and then maybe some snow, especially west of the Parks Highway in the Susitna Valley. Copper River Valley, you're looking at at least four to seven inches of snow, some higher amounts possible. Uh, winter weather advisory for you. Driving conditions around south central will be tricky. Uh, the White Pass area looking at a winter weather advisory tonight into uh, Friday. Uh, as much as four to six inches of snow there. And for the interior, a lot of wind and some snow, including Fairbanks, looking at about three to five inches of snow and gusts to 25. Be careful driving no matter where you are. Have a good and safe night. See you tomorrow. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.